Hello and welcome to Empowered Learning. This particular lesson will be on how to derive the co-function identities using complementary angles in trigonometry. So to start off, when we say co-function, what we mean is the trigonometric functions evaluated at a particular angle that share the same terminal side. And so what we mean by the terminal side is the terminal side here. So if we look at this generic circle, of radius r, we'll see that from the x-axis here, if we spin counterclockwise to get to this terminal side here, that an angle theta is made. And so from that, the segment that goes from the origin, or the vertex here, up to this point is actually what the terminal side is. And so if we look here, we'll see that, of course, if we make a line to go straight down to the x-axis, with that this forms a right triangle. And so we know that the relationship in between the sides of a right triangle follows the Pythagorean theorem, but also in terms of trig functions, we know that there's a ratio of sides here with respect to the angle. In particular, we know that whenever we say that we have the ratio of the side opposite of the angle to the hypotenuse, which we see here, then that's the same as sine of an angle. And in this case, the angle is theta. If we do the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, then we have cosine theta. If we do the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, we have tangent. And then, of course, for cosecant, that is just the reciprocal of sine. So we just flip sine, and we have y over r. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so we just flip, and we see that we have, instead of x over r, we have r over x. And lastly, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so instead of having y over x, we have x over y. So now that we have this established, one other thing that we can see here is that, let's say that we want to consider this angle in between the terminal side and the y-axis. And so if we did that, then we know that the sum of theta plus this other angle, alpha, would end up being 90 degrees, or in radians, it would be pi over 2 radians. So if we took that and then took this line here and intersected it perpendicularly with the y-axis, we could form another right triangle. Okay. If we took these two right triangles that are together and sort of broke them apart, the one here with the green line I've just drawn looks like this. And the one, with the, uh, the one that I originally had will look like this. And so if we look at the relationships of theta to all the sides, we would get the same thing that we had here. But if we looked with everything in terms of alpha, then things would look a little differently. And the key to being able to do this is to know that our alpha here added up with theta is going to be pi over 2 radians, or 90 degrees. But if we just solve for alpha, that would just be pi over 2 minus theta. So if we look at the same exact relationships, but look at it in terms of this particular right triangle, this is what we would get. So if we start off with sine of alpha, that would be the same as sine of pi over 2 divided by, sorry, pi over 2 minus theta. And of course, if we looked here, sine is going to be x divided by r, or opposite divided by hypotenuse. If we did cosine of alpha, then this would be the same as cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. And of course, cosine is adjacent side over hypotenuse. So that would be y divided by r. If we did tangent you would see that tangent is going to be the side opposite to the angle over the adjacent side. So that would be x divided by y. 
And of course, from here, you'll see that if we do all the reciprocal ones, we're just going to flip each of these. So we know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So when we write this out, instead of it being x over r, now it's just going to be r over x. And for secant, Instead of this being y over r, we're now going to write this as r divided by y. And then lastly, we're going to have cotangent. And you see, instead of having x over y, now we have y over x. So now that we have both of these all labeled out here, we want to make the connections in between the two. And if you notice, we have x over r here and x over r here. So what this is telling us in this case is that our sine of pi over 2 minus theta is the same thing as, in this case, cosine theta. Similarly, if we look over here, we have y divided by r. y divided by r, that goes with sine. Now keep this here. Next, if you see we have x divided by y, and of course, here x divided by y is the same as cotangent. So if we come here, so we have cotangent of theta there. Next one is r divided by x. So if we look, r divided by x is here, so that is secant theta, and that has to go with the cosecant alpha there, or cosecant of pi over 2 minus theta. Okay, and so for r over y, over here we have r divided by y, that's going to be cosecant there. And lastly, we have y divided by x, and of course, y divided by x is the same as tangent here. So you see when we put all this together, and I'll go ahead and erase some of this so that we can see it all, we'll see that sine of pi over 2 minus theta is, theta is the same thing as cosine of theta here. And cosine of pi over 2 minus theta is the same thing as sine theta. And tangent of pi over tangent of pi over 2 minus theta is the same as cotangent theta. And so as you see we go down, that is the connection in between the two. So this allows us to be able to do such things as this. So let's say, and I'm just going to do this in degrees to make it more simple. So let's say if I wanted to know what sine of 30 degrees is. Well, one of the things I know is that since there's a relationship in between sine and cosine. I know this would be the same as sine, cosine of 90 degrees minus 30 degrees, of course, which would be cosine of 60 degrees. So that's what this particular identity is trying to tell us. So whenever we have situations where um, we see sine 30 and it's advantageous for us to put it in terms of cosine, then the equivalent expression would be cosine of 60. 
And so this concludes the derivation of the co-function identities using complementary angles.